Welcome back to Visions for Health. I'm Wendy Trubo, and my guest today is Patricia Howard. I'm delighted to have Patricia here. She is a certificate holder in the Barbara Brennan Healing Science, as well as an instructor for the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program developed by John Kabat-Zinn. Patricia, welcome. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for being here. So you mentioned to me before the show that you actually had a career before this. Yes. This is your second career as it mm -hmm. stands. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to transition from your other career into this? Well, I started Barbara Brennan School as a four-year program. So I started that in 95. And it's, um, we'd go down to the school for a week, five times a year. So I was working full time. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated in 99 and knew I really wanted to teach. So when I got laid off in 2001, I went straight into the teacher training program. For the Barbara Brennan School? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so 99 to some period of time that you did the teacher training school. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Then I didn't get a job teaching. Right? Oh. So it was one of those things um, that Oscar Wilde says is two tragedies in life to get what you want and not get what you want, uh -huh. right? So I was off, the school was opening up in Europe, so I, that was where I was going. And the school had moved to Miami, so the enrollment needed time to build up again. It used yeah. to be in New England. Yeah. So a friend of mine said, well, why don't you go out to UMass Medical and do the mindfulness training? Mm -hmm. So I had all the, the teaching uh, background behind me. And then when I saw in eight weeks what happened to people through practicing themselves, mm -hmm. I was just blown away. So it's, it's a, it was a wonderful segue to understand the need for people to practice. So, you're, so this is now, you're teaching an eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction. Can you say a little about what it means to be mindful? What that, what that yes. would mean to people who are watching? Right. It's, it's about awareness. It's about being present with what I'm doing when I'm doing it, rather than five steps ahead or five steps behind. So in the moment. Yeah, so most people know, like I was just teaching on, on Saturday, and people know that, okay, I get anxious when I go into the future. They, they know that. Mm -hmm. They just don't know the option of staying in the present. <laughs> or how to. Yes, the practice okay. of that. And are they aware that they're even going to the future? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they, they are aware that I'm living on a to-do list, and I don't want to but I don't know how to get off it. So when you're talking about mindfulness, you're talking about recognizing there's that ticker tape or that noise always playing or the radio? Yes, so it's the practice of locating ourselves in our bodies. So that's why the breath is wonderful. So just even, like even right now, okay, am I aware of my in-breath and my out-breath? Mm -hmm. And that's always kind of the question. So even if I'm not, I'm mindful. And when you say locating ourselves in our bodies, what does that mean to you? And what, how would I know that I've, I've done that? Yeah, okay. So right now, like feeling my feet on the floor. Uh -huh. Right, okay, are they there? Um, am I sitting on the chair? Do I feel the support of the chair? So focusing on the sensations of your body? Yeah. And the ex so sensation is in this moment. <clears throat> Breath is in this moment. So they're the things that kind of anchor us. Thoughts are rarely in this moment. Okay. Thoughts are rarely happening now. It's usually about something else. Sure. That actually makes a lot of sense. So as you're talking, I'm thinking, okay, what will be my question <laughs> leading off of that? So mm -hmm. that's not being present. Right. So it's a trusting that your, your questions come. Uh huh. That we don't have to work so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give an example of mindfulness that people might experience on a daily basis? So. You know, when you're talking, I think of myself, I think, oh, well, I walked out of the house without something I needed. Mm -hmm. And I get in the car and I go, oh, is that some place where mindfulness might make a difference? Yes. So if you do, like in the program, we do a 45-minute practice, and that's why there's such a remarkable transformation in people's lives. Some teachers will say, do two minutes, do three minutes. And when you say a practice, what are you referring to? Um, the, a body scan, so like that, that we come into our bodies, we become aware of sensation um, and what that experience is. So any kind of check-in in the morning, mm -hmm. a few minutes breathing, or even just to be aware as I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready. 
Okay. I'm and not, not already on the traffic. I'm not, all, you know, that kind of a way. Because yeah. oftentimes we, we um, create this overlay of guarding to prepare us for the day. Mm -hmm. as if it's some awful day, you know, that kind of way. And it's like, wow, the day might just be okay, right? And my best bet is to be present. Okay, so the when you're talking, what I'm thinking is life lives into the expectation we put on it. So if you think it's going to be a bad day, it will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the practice of mindfulness <clears throat> is, you know, eventually, I don't care what kind of day it is, I'm here. Okay. So when things go wrong, oh, interesting, they go wrong. When they go right, interesting, they go right. So I'm not um, swayed so much either way. So is mindfulness taking away some of the meaning that we put on whatever happens? Yes. Yeah. So good or bad, it is what it is? Yeah, and it's more important to be here. Okay. So this is an eight-week program. Mm -hmm. What's a typical session like? Um, the program is very, like John Kabat-Zinn created, it's very well set up. There's enough, um, each week has a different theme, mm -hmm. so it's interesting enough to our cognitive mind. Okay. There's something to chew on, uh -huh. right? Um, but we're, most of the time we're, we're practicing, well, how do I come down into my body, out of my head? And when people start this program, are they typically aware that they're not in their body and they're in their head? Or? Not really. Okay. So they yeah. think they're present, and then you show them what present means? Yes, okay. yeah. Or they're very defined in the persona or the personality or the how I have to present myself, right? And then they realize, wow, this, I can let that go and I'm still here. And I can let that go and I'm still here and I'm let that, you know? Um, oftentimes people fall asleep a lot mm -hmm. because it's like we don't really know what it is to be relaxed and awake. That whether it's the coffee or the sugar or the personality, there's like an onness that I think I have to mm -hmm. rev and we play with, maybe I don't need to. So every week has a different topic. Yeah. It's eight weeks long. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that for 45 minutes, how long is the session? Two hours. Okay. Yeah. And then is there homework between the classes? There is. So what is different about this program, what John Kabat-Zinn says, we gather um, around what is right with us. So it's for everyone. Okay. It, it's not for a particular group or subset of groups. Those groups can be very good and supportive at the time. But the theme for the first week is that there's more right with us than wrong with us, regardless. Uh -huh. So if we can just kind of, wow, that's actually true. Right? But, but we don't live like that's true. We, I don't talk to myself oftentimes like that's true. Right. We live like we are our issues. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the theme, and then we do a mindful practice. So the first few weeks, it's with the body scan, uh -huh. and then some gentle yoga, and in the program was originally a pain clinic, so the, the yoga is very gentle, mm -hmm. and um, then we do more with the sitting meditation. Okay. Yeah. And when people are at home, do they report that they're unable to do it, or do they say, oh, I can do that, no problem? Uh, it ranges, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what helps me with the Brennan background, understanding the different types of reactions. So some people are good students. Right. Do these, right? Yeah, so, so th that's an advantage to them that they're going to get the practice done, so they're going to get the benefit of the practice. Other people in their, in their makeup, they're going to struggle more. But there's nearly nothing wrong with that because I don't invent new habits to approach my practice. I just see all the habits I approach my life in and it gets slowed down. So people are going to do your program the way they do their life? Yes and it's no different, and then the goal is to uncover how they're doing life? Yes. To give them more power to see it? Yeah. Okay. So I can say, um, hello, my resistance, and do my practice. Uh -huh. I don't have to give credence to my resistance, but I can recognize action, first thing I say is no. Uh -huh. Change, no. Right? <laughs> so I want to get very um, gentle and tender with my no. So it's, it doesn't lead me. Right, it's just this side companion. It's there. Yeah. yeah. The, so, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna has no power. Right. It's just there. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, when I bring my awareness to this moment, I realize, well, what's my choice in this moment? So if my habit is always no, and the no is kind of a lot of times unconscious, I might play with saying yes to a few things. 
And then there I've was been... a movie about that, I think. Some guy had to say yes to everything. Ah, <laughs> well, that would be a wonderful practice. Yeah. yeah. And does this make a difference in people's health? Yes. How? Um, what it, it's very amazing for people who want to give the orientation to say we are going to be focusing on our breath in this moment and realize the impact that has. My sense is that the, the huge effect on health comes from unhooking the adrenals. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Right, because that's what sets everything off mm -hmm. and that's why it's hard when we break down medicine into all these different areas yeah. and we say, oh, well, mindfulness helps this, mindfulness, but we're used to the drug doing that one and then this drug, doing, we, we separate a lot and then wow, here's a tool that integrates everything because the body is integrated. So can you talk about how it quiets the adrenals or unhooks the adrenals? And Yeah, and um, so like Eckhart Tolle, he wrote The Power of Now, he was saying when we are present in this moment, it's a moment of non-fear. Right? Okay. So um, getting to understand that like is just huge. So it's, it's my choice. It's like whatever tape I want to play, I get to play that. So I get to play the tape that life supports me or life's out to get me, mm -hmm. right? right? And when, when I become present then, th that once those adrenals quiet, I can start to use a different part of my brain to process things. So can you say more about that? How does, how does the, you just mentioned that the brain does something yeah, different. Yeah, so with fear, the amygdala is gonna kick in uh -huh. and then we're in fight, flight, fight or flight. freeze, okay. right? And as I say, some of us are talented enough to do all, right? So at the same time, we're kind of <laughs> running everything. So when I unhook that I don't need, I can bypass the amygdala and then I can go into the neocortex that that's meant to be the most evolved part of our brain, but we don't use it a lot, okay. right? So then I assess the situation as it is, and I, have a, I move from reacting to responding. So can you talk a little about, I'm not actually sure if this is something you typically get into, mm -hmm. is then when you've quieted the amygdala and you're no longer in fight or flight, what happens in someone's body? Do you have an example of a, of, of a client who had some outcome that was better or? Right, um, so we, one of the students who came to the program um, is no longer diabetic. Yeah, so she had, um, she had tried for Patricia, years. Patricia, this is extreme. Hold on, you just said she got rid of her diabetes. Yes, yeah. Okay, please say more. Right. Um, by doing the practice, having the discipline of the practice, she st she's one of the people who struggled with her practice. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't mind everyone having a different experience in the group. They're all doing different, a different course nearly because mm -hmm. it's so personal. They're doing their course. Yes. With yeah. your outline. Right, right. John Kabat-Zinn's outline. <laughs> right, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, and my facilitation. So I, I can support people in understanding what process they're going through. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is challenging and just keep coming back. And so keep coming back. This is a woman who was on medicine for diabetes? Yes. Yeah. And is now not on medicine and for is diabetes? Is now not on medicine and has lost, at this stage, 42 pounds. Wow. Yeah. When did she do your course? Last year. Wow. Yeah. And you think this is by unhooking the fight or flight? So she was chronically stressed and chronically activated? Yes, and what, what mindfulness does, like all the, all the habits that we have as regards, do I leave my body? Kind of do I just space out, right? And do I collapse and get overwhelmed by things? Do I caretake people? I'm always out there with other people. Do I control others or do I control myself? So the practice of mindfulness is undoing all those habits. Undoing the habits or being present to them or Both. choosing initially, them? Initially being present. So for most people, what they find, this is less normal, right? And they go, oh, I can do this. Yeah. That's huge, right? And, it, and then it becomes more fun that we get to see, oh, this is my reaction, and then I get a choice. So right? can you say anything about a client who noticed it and the difference it made 
I mean, does this make a difference with children? Does this make a difference? Yes. Um, a young mother came. I think she just had one child, a five-year-old, but busy, busy life. And, and the, the little girl said, Mom's back. Hmm. It was just so sweet because children uh, are just looking for some sort of adult presence. And, and when they find that, they can calm down. If they don't, there's, there's nothing to soothe them or calm them. They're usually too young to do that themselves. And I think kids are the best epitome of being in the moment and being yes. present. Yeah, so. yeah, and such an invitation. And then another man, it's like when people come to the program, they think they're coming for this thing, right? At the end of the program, they just get so much more out of it mm -hmm. that usually what they're coming for, they see, is, has not been that significant. So what would an example of that be? Yeah. Why would people, so what are people's motivations originally for starting this program? Um, oftentimes it's to get off the to-do list, right? It's to understand I'm stressed, it's affecting my relationships, um, it's affecting my health, and I don't know how to make that change. So to put people in positions of power in themselves yes or back in the driver's seat yeah okay yeah and and oddly enough not <clears throat> from the place of control from the place of presence mm -hmm. which is huge because just talking in the last class control can seem so grounding I, well, I, it might feel safe yes yeah and and to unhook literally in my back from that can uh, for some people be terrifying because mm -hmm. I've been doing it for years and it's worked mm -hmm. for, for in many many ways um, so to cultivate the energy of trust in life in myself and others is tremendous so okay so some people come to feel more in the driver's seat from presence mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you're saying really to get out of reaction yes and get into choice yeah and then responding. As opposed to reaction? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what would be some people's examples for why they would do this program? Um, fertility is another one. So any time the stress reaction kicks in, it's going to affect the body, uh -huh. right? So if I can unhook those adrenals, my, my body can get, have, get back to its own wisdom. I know someone who's gotten pregnant in your class twice, yes. actually. Yes. <laughs> Not by you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So again, with the adrenals, that somehow she was in fight or flight, or the amygdala was always firing. And when there's fear in the body, and then that stress of the calendar, of the the pressure of the couple, of you know, um, it can take away from the experience of trying to conceive. Mm -hmm. And Great, it should be fun. Yes, yes. And when there can be more fun in the body, the body is more fertile. Okay. Right? When there's fear in the body, it, it's not um, a great environment. So right? interestingly, the things you're saying, you know, the thoughts you have, if you listen to them, do create a cascade in your body. Yes. So if you're driving and you think, oh, I'm going to get in a car accident, Immediately, you, your adrenals kick in, mm -hmm. you secrete cortisone. Yes. Your body goes wild. So that makes sense if you're in a fight or flight that fertility might be impaired. Yes. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why else? Um, any kind of illness, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's funny, in the last two classes, people just came with, I think mindfulness is more in vogue now. Thich Nhat Hanh would say for those in the West, he would use the word grace. That, that can I sit in grace rather than in fear? Because mindfulness, we don't really know what it is. Right. But as soon as people start to practice, they get it. And they say, oh, I feel relaxed. And they, they say it as if someone else has come into their body. Do you know that kind of way that it's this? But really, I, I tell them, no, this is who you are. Yeah. When you're not in fear, this is who you are. And this is your best version. So it behooves us to practice a little. So what happens when the class ends? Do pe are people then, that's it? Or are there refresher classes? Or how does it work? Yeah, so some people have taken the program six times, hmm. right? Not because they weren't getting anything out of the programs, because they were getting so much and they were seeing so much change in their lives. 
and it really helps. I, I used it myself. We'll talk about me going from corporate into um, healing. How do we transition? Mm -hmm. So change is the usually the thing that's most fear-based that we resist, mm -hmm. and it's the only thing that's going to happen. Right. right. You're guaranteed. <laughs> right. So if I can get comfortable with the muscle of change, that I'm going to use it over and over and over again. So that actually brings up a great question for me because I know I go to class. And so I guess the thought that after eight weeks you can do it on your own is somewhat of an overestimation, I think, for a lot of people. You know, eight weeks is the tip of a habit establishment, yes. I think. Yeah. It really, I think for some people, they, if they do the practice, they just love what they're getting from it. Mm -hmm. They love this sense of inner ease that I'm okay with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I ask people, when I see them individually, what they want to create in their lives, and I've worked here like in Ireland and Iceland, on the intake form, most people say inner peace. It's mm -hmm. some way to live with how I attack myself. So this is what Thich Nhat Hanh is saying about grace. Yes. So yeah. inner peace, grace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some people, well, well, they just hit the ground running, and it's like their new thing. Some people, but, oh yeah, I did a course on mindfulness. <laughs> you know what I mean? And right. It, right? Um, and, and some people, I want it, so I'll do it once a year, or I'll, I'll do the eight-week course, but then I'll find a local um, people who practice. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do one-day retreats, mm -hmm. five-day retreats, things like that, yeah. So it's something we need to cultivate, yeah. and when we practice in a group, um, it's amazing. Like in the mindfulness program, people don't cross talk. They don't chat amongst themselves. They don't know each other's stories. <laughs> they just come and sit with each other. And then this beautiful energy starts to happen that they're really looking forward to. Wow, there's no pressure on me. I, I, I can just be in my practice. So as one person starts to still, that helps the other, helps the other. And then the group has a lovely energy that everyone is, is bathing in and gaining from. How long have you been teaching these classes? Since 2003. Okay. And yeah. do you do the practice while you're teaching it? Yes. Yeah. Do you have your own practice for mindfulness that you do on a daily basis? Yes, they would be the same practices. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And have you, f have you found that there's a setup that works for a lot of people in terms of first thing in the morning, middle of the day, three times a day, once a day? Is there, is there anything? around frequency that matters? Yes, so for most people, it's best if we can get it done in the morning. It's like, wow, I've already given to myself. I'm, I'm recharging myself before I meet the day, mm -hmm. right? For some people, that's impossible. For one man, he was self-employed. It was impossible for six weeks until he did it in week six. Right? So, so a lot about belief systems. Um, some people are going to fight that structure. So I just say whenever it suits. Right, yeah. But in the morning, I, I've given myself something which is new for most of us. I've taken care of myself before I, I go out to meet others. Well, in the airlines, they say, put your air mask on yourself first yes. before yes. you assist others. Yeah. So, and I know I say to my patients, if you're not well cared for, how are you caring for your family? Right. So this makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything physiological about the morning that makes a difference? Is it, does it quiet the adrenals in the morning? Uh, is there anything that you can refer me to? Um, there is, as, the, as regards the energy of the day, that there is a, a momentum for us either to move or, or not move, kind of, that I, I check in with myself. Yeah. Towards the end of the day, people tend to be more tired. I know I am. Right. So if they're doing the body scan, there'll be a greater chance that they sleep. Mm -hmm. John Kabat-Zinn says you can use it to sleep. It just doesn't count as your practice. Right. right? <laughs> you need a nap. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and yet for some people that's, in, in, particularly in the beginning of the, of the program, when we're pretty strong in my beliefs of who I am, uh -huh. I will have more limitations on possibilities. Right. And then as I start to kind of open my mind a little bit more and play a little bit more, um, we do a formal practice. We also do an informal practice. What does that mean? So that means you just pick something. could be like driving to work, um, having a shower, 
what I'm making the lunch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm aware that in this moment I'm doing this. And another woman in the last course was waiting for her doctor as she was going into her second round of chemo. And she starts to breathe. And she starts to realize she's very happy and very peaceful. So those two things you usually wouldn't put together. Mm -hmm. But that's the gift of her practice. That she can draw on that in this um, very stressful time. Yeah. And then something completely different. Her experience was completely different than what she expected. So she was even surprised. Right. Wow, I'm peaceful and my, my doctor isn't here. You know, and I won't know the, the results for two more weeks. Mm -hmm. But to be able to offer that to someone um, is just extremely gratifying. Yeah, I think, uh, who's the book? Byron Katie, Loving What Is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So what is, is. Yeah. So is there an optimal, now, understanding that every human is different mm -hmm. and everybody's life is different, is there some period of time that mindfulness practice in a, in a period of time has been shown to make a difference? Meaning, is it 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Is there some time? Um, I know from, say, the, the 45 minutes practice of the eight weeks, research has shown that that's changing the, the brain waves, right? So uh, new, new pathways are forming in the brain. Once a week for 45 minutes or a every day. day? Every day. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's the study done there. Um, other, it really, like, depends on the person. Someone else, like Eckhart Tolle, says, do it until you want to do more. So two minutes. Right, then three minutes, and then five minutes, right? Um, so yeah, everyone's different. It, it just, and in other cultures, it's more normal that we have some kind of practice. Mm -hmm. like yoga practice, meditation, is much more Eastern, mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty much part of the day. John Kabat-Zinn says, this should be like brushing your teeth. Right, a part of your self-care. Is that normal? And he said, like, if you went to an orchestra, you would expect that they tune themselves. They tune their instruments. Uh -huh. So same with us. We get to tune ourselves. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a lot of time left. Is there anything that you would want to cover that I didn't ask you that would be valuable? Yes. I would say, particularly with the mindfulness, um, it's for everyone. So sometimes when I get diagnosed with an illness, um, there's more of an urgency. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to wait for the illness. Right. Right. Um, it is going to improve everything. So whether it's parenting, whether it's relationships, and, and more and more now people are transitioning in their lives to, to find that work that's meaningful for them or not necessarily work, but some activity that's bringing more meaning. Mm -hmm and a lot about giving myself permission. So, so one woman, um, she wrote my name on her computer to contact me, and that day we bumped into each other in a town that neither of us live in, mm -hmm. and she said, I wanted to tell you, I came, I've just come back from Brazil, I did Home for Habitat in Brazil. I never would have done that if I didn't do the mindfulness. Yeah. So, so it just opens things up. That's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Visions for Health. I'm Wendy Trubo. My guest is Patricia Howard, who is an instructor of the John Kabat-Zinn Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. Thank you.